Hello everyone! Welcome to the Esoteric Software Stream. My name is Erika and in today's stream we're going to animate a walk from scratch on the character that we created some skins during the streams before. This is the character and we're going to see some tips and tricks on how to animate a walk, this time with this character that was created. You can find a link to the downloadable project in the description of the video if you're watching a recording. So let's head to animate mode <laughs> where we had some testing animation. We're going to create a new animation that we're going to be calling walk. Okay, so for walking I have some tips. I used to try to make my characters walk in place, which was difficult then to tune when I wanted my characters to not have sliding feet, which is something super common when you see uh, that the characters like walk at the slightly wrong pace or maybe just one foot is sliding etc. So I'm going to show you a technique to avoid that, that makes it super easy and it also speeds up the process for you, uh, making it so that you just mostly have to copy paste and then adjust a little bit the uh, keys in between. Fine boy for example is walking like this, the feet are sliding, okay, they are at the wrong uh, speed. So one key thing that we want to identify is the speed at which we want the characters to be able to move, uh, which I think, like let's see what, what I place it here, okay, I think it's a good idea to have some somewhat numbers that will make sense when they, uh, once they are outside of spine. Consider that these are pixels at your full character size, so if you're going to scale your character down, you're going to have to also divide that number here on the translation. So if you translate by a hundred pixels in one second your character, if you make your character half the size in game, it's gonna be 50 pixels because you're scaling everything down. I prefer not to move the root and instead to create a container so that I can move the feet, the hips and everything safely without actually touching the root which I might want to use for other things. I'll go back in setup, new, bone and I'll call this bone container. First we have to parent everything so it is inside our container. Let's go back to animate mode. Now I'm gonna be translating this container bone. Let's key the translation on frame 0. So I go on frame 30. I'm going to get it to be a fixed number like a thousand pixels. Half of my walk is gonna be at 15. I can get for example the hips here. Now the highest position for the hips is when the uh, there's the passing position which is when basically the character is standing straight which looks more or less like this. I could get the character to be a tad higher if the character was standing on um, the tip of the feet but I guess that this height is also fine so I'm, I'm gonna start with this. Okay, I, I'm bowling it that it's here, okay, and then here we have the middle position. In the middle positions the character has uh, the legs spread so it's gonna be bent a little bit like this. Doesn't have to be too much, it depends on uh, how you like them. Now we see <laughs> that it's doing this sort of movement, very natural walk, right? I'm going to add a couple new bones which I'm going to use as a reference, reference end, okay, and I'll simply place it where the other bone was supposed to be placed, then for the other one I'm going to, okay, place it here, so we see them, they end up here, okay, usually what I do is something like this, I get them in place and then the trick is the important part because then afterwards we can move them around. So at some point, okay, where it's here, this is where it needs to actually. Be. Oh, I accidentally. I think I did it. I think this is a good placement because if you look at this, it's in a good position for where this other one reached. To recap, we had this container bone. We translated it by a thousand pixels, so we had a nice round number. Then I used these little stars just to be some reference of where the feet are going to end in the end and I just kind of spread the feet after lowering the hips a little bit. For the hips pattern we always move the hips first because the hips are going to drag the rest of the animation and when the hips are lower we kind of have a little bit more range for the feet to uh, open a little bit more compared to when they are in the passing position which is these. The trick consists 
in using copy and paste of the bones. We copy the transforms of a bone so that it ends up in the same position and it's not moving. If you copy and paste a key, like your foot is always in the same place. But did you know that you can also copy and paste a transform? So for example, we have this foot and it's placed like this. And we decide that this is the position of the foot here. We can copy the transform. And notice what I clicked. I did not click here. I clicked on the bone itself. Let's do it again so you can see it. If I copy these here, I only copy the keys. Instead, what I want to copy is the transforms. I copy the placement, the bone transforms of this foot. I go on frame 15. I paste this position. Ah, completely stuck in place. And for the ending, what do I do? I just copied this initial key. Now I copied the key, not the bone transform. I go to the end and paste that. Let's look at it. See, already we get them spaced nicely and we know that they are not going to slide. <laughs> I mean, they are sliding now, but it's very easy to fix this. Okay, so maybe I'll raise it here. Boom, we have a walking animation. See how easy this can be? I'm going to copy this key here. I'll paste it here. So now they are the same here and I'm going to also key the translation here. I want the position of this foot that I think it's nice to be the same also in the middle. So I go at the end of the animation where the place uh, where I wanted to reach it is and I'm going to copy the transform. So remember, I don't click on the key. I click on the bone so it copies the transform. I am in world axis so that this works. And then I go back to frame 15 and paste. Now we just raise this a little bit. It's basically done. We already have a walking animation and we just have to iron out the details. Now I'm sure that some of you will ask, okay, but now it's kind of sliding. I'm not gonna be able to use this in an animation. So what do you do? You remember that number that we used that was so round, so nice. You just remove this key. And now you have your character ready to be used in game. See, I just removed the key, ready to use. Okay, I actually don't need these bones that were references anymore. We can actually also add maybe some nice uh, curves so they do things. Okay, I'll, I'll just uh, place the curves like this. Or I could change these so it has more flavor when it moves, so it's a bit more unique. If you think that you didn't place your feet correctly, because you see it's doing this, and maybe you would like your feet to, uh, in this position, be a little bit more forward instead of so in the back. What you can do is also use this other trick to fix the position of the feet, which consists in selecting all the keys of the two feet. And then you just use uh, the adjust button and uh, you place them a little bit more centered. It's still going to work nicely. I can still add back this other key on the container so that it works. Okay, translate one zero zero zero. And then let's look at it translating. The feet are still not sliding. You just have to remember that number that you used in the beginning. So after recentering these a little bit in a way that it's nice at any point, remember you can use the adjust button. Uh, let's actually also animate the rest. For example, one of the typical things uh, of uh, uh, walking animation is that the people are not like standing very straight like this. They are actually bending a little bit forward. So we could have uh, that bending happen, just tilting a little bit. And uh, maybe we increase this tilt in the passing position. Then another important thing that we want is for the character to swing the hands a little bit while walking, rotate them first in one direction, does not matter if they break, and then I key this change also on frame 30. Then in the middle, I swing them in the opposite direction like this. So now they are doing kind of a weird movement like this. I apply curves and then I offset them so they are correct. Now the hand that is swinging in the front is always the opposite of the foot. So that means that I need to offset these two bones so they move in reverse. I select box select the keys. I go in the dot sheet and activate the offset um, button here and then I just drag okay until frame 15 so they are inverted. <laughs> yeah and now it's moving in reverse like this. 
Now, everything is happening exactly at the same time, which is kind of lame, right? So we're going to offset now all of the arms movements here by a little bit, I don't know, a couple of frames. And then just the down bones by a couple frames more. We did those nice shoulder movements, so we're going to get the shoulder movement too. And I'm going to translate them maybe using local axis and I'll get it to be like this. And then in the middle I'll get it to be more like this. We can get the head to uh, bounce up and down or move a little bit whenever you're walking because it does that a little bit, right? I'm going to key the actual position here. It does not matter if that is the final position. I'm just going to do it okay this way. And then I'm going to move the head a little bit down, a little bit forward. Then it goes like this. Yeah, it needs to be offset a little bit. I think like this. We added that fancy control to the head, right? So we could also get some of that movement also in place here. So same reasoning. Uh, we could actually get the character to, uh, to look a little bit on one side and then the other while it also moves up and down. So another thing that I think it's important uh, whenever we animate these things is to also get the eyes to look in the direction where the character is walking to, because otherwise it's kind of uh, like a doll that is just moving. That's it. That's the walk. It is done. Usually what I do for safekeeping is I duplicate this and I mark in the number of uh, the speed that I used here and then I just uh, delete the original key or maybe I write the number down in the walk uh, without adding the key just so that I don't have to have two copies of the walk. I could add some flaps uh, here to the jacket so that the jacket moves and then forget about it forever. First uh, let me add a little control here for the uh, flaps uh, of the jackets. Now this is in the way so a trick to hide it is to right click on the visibility button here so that I don't have to see it and I can just focus on this and then reactivate it by pressing ctrl H. Okay, I imagine that the skirt will be something like this. So for this flapper here I think I'm gonna place it maybe like this and then I'll have another one here at around the same height so that I have stuff to make it flap. I want to uh, get the jacket to follow that bone that I created so I'm also going to bind it to these two bones. Then I'm going to right away like boom like this just add some physics constraints because why not. So new physics constraint and that is done. Now let's go in the animation, let's check it out. I think I'm gonna use the walking animation so they move a little bit. If I stop the animation it's gonna spring back to where it was so I think that I'll need to enable not just simulate but also deterministic so that I can see the bones in a simulated position like this. And then I'm going to assign the weights so now I have the bouncing movement, which is very cool. Disable here the deterministic. Okay, and then I'll shake it a little bit. Yeah, it's looking nice. Cool. So this could be already used in a game. As you see, flavor is basically added by itself with physics to walk. And it's especially important because we got the walk to look like it makes sense when the character is moving so the feet are not sliding. Thank you for joining me today for this animation stream. I will see you again next Tuesday. Feel free to suggest the topic for the next session in the comments. Bye bye!